Let's get some analysis now with governance expert from the University of the Free State, Dr. Harlan Kluter. Dr. Kluter, thank you so much for your time. A very good morning to you. Let's talk a little bit about what's transpired in the Western Cape. Finally, it's though we've got leadership uh, of the African National Congress, provincial leadership within the Western Cape. And mind you, this is the ninth elective conference about more than five years since it actually last had provincial leadership. In fact, even being criticized and, and perhaps even uh, scorned by the, the, the Secretary General of the African National Congress. Congress saying that you're busy vying for position. Meanwhile, the Democratic Alliance in the Western Cape is cruising with votes. Is this a sign of stability when it comes to the African National Congress and the way in which it's going to meta out events in the Western Cape? Good morning, Faith, and good morning to all the viewers. Uh, you know, the ANC has, has been struggling in the Western Cape uh, for more than a decade. You know, I think the last time I was just thinking this morning in preparing for this, the last time we had almost like stability was when Ibrahim Rasul was the chair and Sabisi Squatcha was the secretary. You know, that, that was the last almost unity uh, uh, that, that we had. And so the ANC has been struggling in the province uh, in terms of on, on the ground. I think uh, voters have lost confidence in the party, uh, and, and, and that has been seen at the polls where the ANC has just been on a downward spiral uh, ever since. And so I know any, any new leadership that comes in makes bold promises, but it is going to be an uphill battle for the ANC to gain control of the Western Cape. But then let's talk a little bit about this. Is it a case of um, power mongering? You know, are the interests here in how to consolidate power, how to get myself a position and subsequently find myself, you know, um, you know, more lucrative deals? In other words, are we facing a situation of politics of poverty or politics of, of bread, for that matter, instead of politics of governance? Is that the problem in the Western Cape? It's that it's all about positioning so that I can get access to some kind of compensation or some kind of profit making at the expense of service? I think it's a problem of the ANC all over the country. Or, uh, you know, it's the, it's the nature of, 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 of politics. People want to get into positions. You know, if I'm a treasurer or if I'm a secretary, I can, I can either use this position to open up opportunities for my people, or I can use it, uh, uh, if I say opportunities, to serve the community better. I think what we've seen, you know, with the Zondo Commission and all that, there's a crisis of confidence. There's a crisis of confidence that people have in the elected representatives to represent them. More or so, the ANC, who was the governing party, who they are in the spotlight, you know. And if you look at all the accusations, if you look at, if you just look at the Auditor General's report of late, you know, uh, in the Free State Province, for example, all over, there's a crisis of governance. And so people, uh, there's a cry in South Africa for ethical and accountable leadership, for people to use these positions of power to really serve the people instead of self-serving. Well, let's talk a little bit about the very said leadership. You know, you've got the likes of Uyuso J.J. Kali Siso, who has now been elected as new chairperson um, by this morning. Uh, he was nominated from the floor. Sharon Davids was actually uh, elected as a deputy chairperson. Neville Delport was elected as the new provincial secretary. Are these individuals that are to contend with come 2024? Because I think that that is where the focus is now lying. It's not necessarily about consolidating for now, but we're looking ahead at the national elections. Uh, but when it, gives, when it comes to these people that have now been elected, into leadership within the province. Are these people hard competitions for the like of the Democratic Alliance? Are they hard competitions for the votes to, to be garnered in 2024? Look, while, while the ANC were fighting one another, we've had the rise of the Patriotic Alliance in the province. You've had Patricia DeLille's, uh, it was first the ID and then it, it, is, it is now good. And so the ANC has really lost ground. You know, in order to fight an election, you have to have a very good infrastructure on the ground with your branches mobilizing. And a lot of time, if people in, if you're in government, if you control, for example, a municipality, it puts you in a pound seat. And so the Democratic Alliance, the blue machine, they, they, they're very well organized on the, on, on the ground. Mm. And so they've, they've used their positions of power within municipalities to consolidate that base. And, you know, and so this being a pre-election year, like I said in the beginning, it's going to be very difficult. It's not impossible. But it's going to be very, very, very difficult for the ANC to regain the trust, uh, specifically in the so-called colored communities that have turned their back on the ANC 
You know, there was a time uh, when, when the ANC had, uh, had a strong showing in the so-called colored areas. But what we've seen over the last couple decade or so is them losing ground. And so to win an election, you need ground force, you need branches, you need unity, you need less infighting. And so it is going to be an uphill battle for the new leadership. Not impossible. In politics, they say politics is the art of the possible. <laughs> and so this leadership is optimistic. They'll have to promise the voters or, or, or their supporters that they will go out and try and win because nobody enters in an election expecting to lose. It is going to be an uphill battle, I'm, I'm afraid. Yeah, I can only imagine that the Democratic Alliance is looking at this particular elective conference and thinking, okay, though they managed to consolidate some kind of unity uh, within the branches of the African National Congress hosting, as you said, uh, an actual elective conference after five years, but it may not necessarily be enough to actually make an incredible dent um, when it comes to 2024. But the African National Congress is seeing this throughout the, the, the country, as you're rightfully mentioning. And I think it was even the SG of uh, the African National Congress, Fiki Lembalula, that was making reference to, for example, what's happening in Gauteng, where you're seeing the likes of Ekuruleni, uh, the likes of Twane, for example, where the African National Congress is seemingly losing grip, even in those spaces where it had experienced uh, the majority. Is this a sign, though, that, that people are actually now choosing to vote from a space of consciousness as opposed from a space of, uh, of, a space of loyalty? Because the liberation movements, as history has shown us, liberation movements are really imprinted in any citizen's heart, whether it's through independence, through apartheid, in South Africa, that liberation movement is really imprinted. But are South Africans ready to vote from consciousness as opposed to vote from loyalty? I think South Africans know exactly what good leadership and bad leadership looks like now. Uh, you know, it's, it's very difficult for the, for the traditional ANC voter, for example, to turn his or her back on the AS is difficult. So that person faces a dilemma. I, I, uh, that, that person argues, I'm no longer trusting the ANC, but is that enough for me to vote for an opposition party? And so he faces that dilemma, either staying away from the polls or, or, or deciding, no, I am going to vote and I'm going to vote with my conscience. But voting against the traditional ANC voter always faces this dilemma of, vo of voting. You know, it's, it's almost seen as a betrayal for a person who has traditionally voted ANC. But I think the ANC, there, there has a line been crossed where people are saying, uh, people I speak to, people are saying, I can no longer trust the ANC with my vote. I can rather than not, I'm, I'm rather not going to vote. Or the person makes that conscious decision to say, okay, I no longer trust the ANC, so I'm going to vote for a smaller party that is principled, you know, uh, who, who they perceive as principled. And so the ANC has got a lot all over the country, losing support, losing the confidence of the voters, the voters, uh, because the ANC story plays out in the media all day, the, the load shedding, the corruption, the uh, poor performance in local governance. And so th that is the public relations exercise or dilemma that the ANC faces to get their traditional voters to come and vote who are losing faith and confidence in the ANC's ability to govern not only the Western Cape, but the, but the country.